Okay, well, my name is Nancy Turner. I am a professor in the School of Environmental Studies at the University of Victoria. And I've been working in the area of ethnobotany, ethnobiology, ethnoecology for, oh, over 40 years. I started as an undergraduate, uh, maybe before that I started as a child being very interested in botany and the out of doors and, and especially um, things like what you can eat out there, what, could, what you can use to dye material with um, and, and love just experimenting with plants in that way. So I grew up uh, in a family of scientists and always was very interested in natural history. But unlike my, uh, my father and my grandfather, who were both entomologists, uh, I, I was more drawn to botany and more drawn into this area of the relationship between people and plants, which is kind of the basic definition of ethnobotany. And I started reading some of the classic literature in ethnobotany for our region um, around Victoria. The two earlier works that are pivotal in my thinking were um, Erna Gunther's Ethnobotany of Western Washington and Elsie Steedman's Ethnobotany of the Thompson Indians of British Columbia based on the notes, the field notes of James Tate who was an ethnographer who worked up in the Ntlakatmuk or Thompson area of southern British Columbia. So I learned from these books that this is an area that you can study and those were more or less the classic ethnobotanies, the kind of uh, ones that focused on indigenous peoples and their uses of plants and their names for plants. But not so much looking at the other um, cultural elements and, and philosophical relationships that people have with plants in their environments. And in a sense, that's the way the field of ethnobotany has grown. It was first um, kind of envisioned as a field by John Harshberger, and he wrote about it in 1895 and 1896 as sort of the study of the uses of plants by primitive peoples. And um, it seems like a very kind of outdated concept when we look at the field of ethnobiology today, which is so broad. It, it, it certainly uh, looks at how people use plants, but, but it's so much broader and has gone into so many different areas from um, our spiritual relationship with plants and environments to the way we look at them, the, our cognitive systems, the way we name and classify the things around us in our, in our environments. Um, the ecosystems, the interrelationships between humans and all living things and our environments all together in a very kind of holistic way. And most recently, I think I see the direction uh, going as the, as the um, ecosystems of the world and the peoples of the world are more and more threatened by these forces of uh, economic development, population growth, um, and essentially um, deterioration of natural processes, I see the role of ethnobiology as um, being extremely important to help all of us to understand better the critical importance of um, how, how humans rely on the ecosystems of the world.